I have something to say. मुझे कुछ कहना है. मन पाए नोटिए. J'ai quelque chose à dire. C'est un ado qui décide. Mais j'ai quelque chose à dire. This, This is Chad and, and Erica, and, and we, we have something to say. say. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining in on another episode of Something to Say. I'm Erica. And I'm Chad. Thanks so much for joining today. Yes. Uh, so we want to start off maybe just by, you know, recapping our weekend. So yeah. I'll let Erica start. How, um, how did your weekend go? It was pretty good. What did I do on Friday? I probably just hung out with Jason. <laughs> and <laughs> um, and so you just spent some time with Jason for a while. Yeah, we probably like watched some movies or something. And then Saturday I went to Joe's job and like where he works. I literally fell asleep. I'm done. Oh my God. <laughs> So literally, at um, when I messaged you, I was yeah. like, "Okay, let me go take a nap real quick." And then the next time I woke up, it was like after nine, and I'm like, "I, I literally worship," and I'm like, "Jordan, it's time to go." And he's like, "He messaged you." And yeah, I, he I'm did. Like, yeah, oh <laughs> I'm like, I figured um, when he didn't respond. So yeah, I went to Joe's job or like at the restaurant that he works at. And it was fun. We had like dinner and just some drinks. Um, so what is it like? It's what? like the it's like a drag show. Like when uh, a bunch mm. of like queens mm. come up and like do I love their your thing. <laughs> 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 it's true. They queens. Yes, <laughs> come and do their like little performance. And um, it's like a restaurant slash bar. So you, oh, like there are tables too. around. You can order food and watch like the show and. and drink and yeah it was fun i think i saw i did look up on instagram and i saw some of the drag stuff but i wasn't sure if it was just a bar or a restaurant yeah i think bars that don't serve food have been closed in chicago right oh i think so recently. that do not serve food mm-hmm. oh really yeah oh like, wait so yeah i think i remember seeing something like that. yeah so they do serve food and yeah, it was fun. Sunday, I was so hungover. And let me tell you, <laughs> wow. Like, because I, Cause you know nowadays, you drink, I don't right? really drink oh anymore. And, like, I usually just have, like, wine. And that's, like, a crazy night for me. And um, I think I had, like, three or four tequila shots. And I think, like, two mixed drinks. And I was literally so hungover the next day. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, who I is missed, this? I miss Erica drinking. <laughs> I don't usually get to see this I anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, who is this? Like, why am I hungover? It reminds you of like two years ago, right? Yeah. Two or three years ago. <laughs> like, I think longer. Because I think like once I started like going to DePaul, DePaul. I started kind of like just focusing yeah. on that. But Or younger wow. days. We'll, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that. And then Sunday, honestly, just like. I went and got a massage. <laughs> it was really, really nice because my chiropractor has been gone for like two and a half weeks. And prior to that, to that, I didn't go see her because I had gone to Myrtle Beach. So like yeah. I had to like kind of, you know, so isolate in quarantine. So I didn't go see her. Uh-huh. And then, okay, so I had my appointment and you know about it. So mm-hmm. right after Jason's driving me home. Mm-hmm. And we get in a car accident right after my chiropractor appointment. And my next chiropractor appointment was not till two weeks after that. And later, like two weeks later, my mom plans a Myrtle Beach trip. And like it was so last minute. She planned it within like a day and a half or two. And like I literally booked Mm -hmm. the hotel like on the way to Myrtle Beach. So it was like a month. At that point, it was so. Yeah, at that point, it's like now a month or something. And then I had to like isolate for two weeks. And then after that, I text her and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna be off for like two weeks." And I'm like, "Great." So like my back's been hurting so bad since then. Um, So I was like, I need to go get like something to like relieve the pain at least in the meantime. So I'm gonna go see her on tomorrow, and then. um, I think I'm going to get another massage because it was so good. Yeah. The lady that was doing my massage, um, my mom goes to her, and she works at a chiropractor's office, and she does, like, the um, massage therapy, I mean. Okay. So, yeah, she was okay. really, really good. Is it in the suburbs out here? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. It's, like, I'm 10 minutes you, away from my house. I'm glad you got to relax and Yeah, especially walk. after, like, my hangover. <laughs> Jason had to drive, come over and bring me, like, Taco Bell. 
That's like the only way it like kind of like felt a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what'd you do? So Saturday, I don't think we did anything much on Saturday. Yeah. Sunday we did go hiking. Yeah, I saw to Star Rock, right? Yeah, um, so that was kind of nice just getting out. It was a long drive there, and for some reason there weren't any highways from out here. Oh, really? Yeah, so we took, it was like maybe 45 minutes before we hit a highway. It was all like local roads. Oh, but I know if it's by you, then you take yeah. over the 90 and then hit it to 80. But it was fun. I mean, once yeah. you got there, it was a little humid, but... Yeah, it um, was really hot Sunday, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. And it was supposed to rain too, so it was like really overcast and we were kind of worried oh. about that. But um, it turned out to just be hot. No biggie. <laughs> <laughs> but we ended up hiking for about four and a half to five hours but it was good at least it was like not really it wasn't even flatland i was going to say at least it was flatland but it was a good amount of hills yeah and like stair well the good thing is that they have stairs so it's not like you're climbing up the actual yeah. hill but they have stairs going down or up into the yeah. canyons so it's really cool um it's my third time going though so yeah jason and i went like last month it yeah. was fine I was also thinking, um, we should plan our trip to Galena. Remember, we had yes. to put it off that time. We should, yeah. we should actually make it happen before the summer is out. Oh my god, yes. I'd be so down. Yes. So we wanted to go wine tasting. Yes. Um, but it got canceled because of my eye incident. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally scratched my cornea or something, so. No, but I'd be so down to do that this time. Yeah. Like, sometime this month. Yeah. Maybe this weekend. If anything, if not this weekend, yeah. then two weeks from now when I get yeah. paid again. <laughs> We're going to plan around that check, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. So for this week's topic, we really wanted to talk about um, the WAP video uh, yeah. featuring Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Well, by Cardi B. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> WAP by Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion. There was, like, a lot of criticism about the video. Yeah, from all angles. Like, yeah. I was really surprised, though, because I... Were you really? <laughs> I don't know if I can really be surprised. I don't right know. And then it, I kind of, like, feel... Okay, so I think with, like, mm-hmm. um, what we were talking about when it comes to, like, the race aspect, I, I think, like, I follow a lot of white and black women, but when I see a lot of, like... But I, when I see, like, a lot of videos or pictures of white women being, like, quote-unquote, like, sexy, I think everyone praises them and says, like, and, like, the Me Too movement and all that, like, kind of owning your body and your sexuality and, like, being sexually free. And so I, with I that, think... you kind of just assume, like... That okay. everyone would be just that accepting of yeah. the video with Cardi B. So I think that's the surprising aspect. And seeing, like, the criticism about, like people kind of telling them like they shouldn't be that explicit the video shouldn't have been that explicit or whatever Mm -hmm. i think that was not so surprising for me Mm -hmm. um when i saw the saw kylie in the video i didn't really think anything of it to be honest Mm -hmm. at first i mean i still i still don't really think anything of it but then i started seeing the criticism of it um and honestly i think a lot of it is just because she's a part of the kardashian family and just because of their tendency to to be, quote-unquote, like, culture vultures, you know, yeah. to be seen as taking advantage of black culture and, like, Hispanic culture. Yeah. And, like, I think a part of that was the backlash, but we were reading today and we kind of saw that a part of it is really just based on, I guess, the dichotomy of just how Kylie was in the video. So she was just, like, walking, strutting her, yeah. her, her stuff, you know, and walking into the door while people like Normani, Rosalia and the other folks that were yeah. featured they were like dancing they were they had to do like More well sexual. they didn't had but like they didn't have to do it but in they the video fe- yeah. they were featured doing um, like a dance or something mm-hmm. and i and didn't Normani really was on her knees like, yeah like doing like you know her thing yeah. but like um it, like you i you, like you said i didn't really see an issue with it other than like the cultural aspect like you said but then when i started looking at the criticism on twitter i'm like oh my god like that makes sense mm-hmm. um the fact that like 
once again, a white woman can do like this put on this cute little bodysuit and and yeah, put on a cute outfit and then people like automatically praise that and then having like the women of color like you know perform like a dance and doing the most than what Kylie was doing I mean it like you said it touches on like what you see on social media because like Kylie herself like you were saying would like post photos like covering her nipples yeah like doing like you see her on Instagram and she'll just be full on naked just covering like the nipple part and then everyone's like praising that or saying like wow like like thank you so much for like showing that women can be sexy and whatever Mm -hmm. but when a black woman does that it's like or like a woman of color even does that it's unacceptable that you shouldn't you should be better you should be going to school focusing on like a career and like because that's what those are with like a lot of the criticisms that i saw and also Mm -hmm. heard like i told you i was listening to the breakfast club and the criticism about it and there was a black woman that called in and um kind of i was saying like oh um you should be better than like doing this like you should not be like showing off your body in that type of way and like and I kind of like now that to think of it it's like I feel bad for her to think for that person that called in to think that they had to like they have to be better than just to be successful yeah honestly that's a product of our society that's exactly like any other you know facet any other arena or you know area where pe- black people or people of color in general are, are, are like it's thought that they have to be twice as good mm-hmm. to be seen as just as good as, as the white person white, yeah so that's i feel like that carries itself over into this unfortunately and we shouldn't have to because at the end of the day that's also causing people to feel stressed like you shouldn't have to feel like you have to be twice as good to succeed mm-hmm. at something and we have to stop telling ourselves that we have to do that because that's almost reinforcing that, that societal idea. norm or yeah. that like expectation, I feel, which is why I was like, I kind of feel bad probably. after thinking mm-hmm. about it because it's like, you should be doing what you want to do, not what like what society wants mm-hmm. you to do. I mean, it, it is easier, say, although I'm even agreeing with this, it's easier said than because yeah. like, I find I know that for myself, like, I'll all like. I do I'm like myself, that. Yeah, I I'll, I'll always yeah. like think about something app, like that I want to do, and I'm like mm, maybe I shouldn't do that because whatever you know. Yeah. And I, I I will consider those factors, but at the end of the day, we really shouldn't have to like we shouldn't have to need or think that we have mm-hmm. to be twice as good. Oh, we can't be that sexual. Oh, we can't start an OnlyFans because yeah. we're black and we're gonna be seen <laughs> as hoes or whatever. Yeah. Like. Do what you want. Yeah. Do yeah. what you want to do if you want to do it. You know. Um. Largely, I think that there has been a lot of, like, a lot of people have have accepted mm-hmm. it. And I think it goes back to what Cardi even said in her tweet. That's what people want to see, you mm-hmm. know. And what kind of bothers me now thinking about it, too, is the fact that in our society, you know how people will put people down as hoes mm-hmm. you know you talk down to them and say oh you a hoe or whatever yeah. you, like you're saying it as an insult but then in cardi's case or like in this video's case well speaking from the positive side of yeah things, cardi herself is able to capitalize on quote-unquote being yeah. a hoe and that lifestyle and that culture yeah. but people that are actually that actually have to live in that lifestyle or that's just who they are yeah and they're regular day day-to-day people like they don't get that's the opportunity. That's looked down upon a yeah. lot more than yeah than like a celebrity mm-hmm. or who you, has money and can just they, like they aren't in regular society. So even yeah. though Cardi even has that negative backlash against it, yeah. it's not affecting her. She's still making her stream her money from her streams and all that. Yeah. So she's fine. But the problem really is like regular folks like you and me, mm-hmm. you know, like her friends or whoever that people might put on as hoes and you know we don't have a way of getting out of that we actually have to live in that stigma Mm -hmm. and learn to survive in it so i think that's more a criticism on our society in general just that we kind of have to not be so hypocritical i guess that's also one reason why this video is also Mm -hmm. good because it does reinforce 
that a woman should be able to con you know i mean i'm not a female second yeah. you know but yeah I, I i'm glad that i'm able to see in general like that sex positivity and just like like cardi like in general just like pushing people to accept their bodies like this is your body she like she into the like yeah she's my what she's my best friend <laughs> like that's my <laughs> you know so i'm really happy to see that she's kind of providing that even just the conversation around the topic yeah i feel like it helps to push that that narrative of sex positivity and um just especially it's because it's coming from a former stripper mm-hmm. that lived the lifestyle, the lifestyle yeah. of what people perceive when people call them like a call you a hoe or like a person a hoe or like a whore or whatever um so she's been there the, that was, like negative yeah. term not like the positive term of like the like hoe and being sexually free and doing mm. what you want with your body more of like something like you kind of have to do like what you said or yeah. like because she didn't have money she grew up in like the Bronx mm. so yeah and I, then people put her down as a whole as a more negative way but no largely I mean outside of the criticism people are more like saying hey what's up ho like you know yeah. and it's more of a good thing in this case for her you know I, I hope that it's slowly because I feel like what you like it's so hard to explain but i think it's well, like what you said that this is i feel like her music and like even any like um celebrities music about like being sexually free mm-hmm. is like a positive thing for the people that are like celebrities influencers just uh, sharing their like sex life and like showing that they're sexually free and they are who they are and they don't really care but i think we could still criticize a lot of people that have that like quote-unquote lifestyle in like normal life Mm -hmm. so i don't think it changes a lot because yeah like you said like we're still criticizing people that actually have to live in that lifestyle or we're still or even choose to live Mm -hmm. like or be that or be Mm -hmm. sexually free i Mm -hmm. think we still like, like people are still gonna criticize yeah. them and, and like talk down to them just because you know that's who they are and yeah. they're gonna use the word whole as a negative criticism you know yeah. and that is just wrong for our society that's that's not fair for us for us to for one or society like i said sex sex mm-hmm. sales and that's what we all want so that's all, yeah. that's what we are looking for in our media and and in our you know, i guess in our lives yeah so that's why we see so much of it in hollywood and like like i said cardi confirmed it that's why a lot of rappers probably even sing about sex because they know that that's what people want to hear you know yeah so for us to be encouraging and 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 you know listening to that type of music but not but accepting it in our real friends, life. yeah exactly, your friends are not to say they're hoes or whatever but <laughs> like in general though people like like you said choose that lifestyle or that's just who they are like whatever aspects of it that that it is and we put those people down versus you know uh, quote unquote r- r- pushing the yeah. celebrities and uh, you know influencers to do more and give us more and be more pers- promiscuous and whatever so just that 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 hypocrisy I think it's something that our society really needs to focus on. And I was going to mm-hmm. ask, like, when we were talking about the Kylie Jenner and the criticism, I feel like a lot of the criticism was coming from people of color. And it's kind of like what we said, how we feel like we have to be so much better than, like, a white person. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're all kind of, by criticizing Cardi B for making that decision, I feel like like we are kind of contributing contributing to the so that, that societal yes. like norm or what um or how like people of color should be tr- like acting mm-hmm. and how you kind of have to be like quote unquote better than mm-hmm. like 10 times better than a white person just to kind of level be, even get to be considered at the same level yeah and I don't think it's any of our faults, like people of color, or black women, or black men. It's I think kind of, it's kind of like how we're structured to yeah. think. Yeah, it's a part of just a society. And like, I, at the end of the day, a lot of us, even though we're people of color, like you're saying, like we still have our own prejudices and yeah. biases, and that plays out in, you know, who we're criticizing. So let's say you're criticizing. Cardi for doing for making this video. Why yeah. really are you criticizing her for doing that? Why do you have a problem with it? You know, so I think that's a good point too because at the end of the day, a lot of this is just how we as a society mm-hmm. are 
taught to think. And, and it's like we're kind of trying to reel in our like friend, like our our friend that's like a person of color like us, because we think mm-hmm. that by them acting this way, no, it's girl, kind of representation yeah. of mm-hmm. ourselves mm-hmm. or something. Because I feel like that's maybe how like my perception might have been back in like high school or like whatever, and been like, um, no, you can't act like this in public because that's, that's a reflection of like me or like other. Uh, Latinas and or, or like a representation of like black women and you shouldn't be acting that way because white people are going to interpret it like this way and we mm-hmm. don't want them to think that and it's like when we talk about a white person we talk about them as an individual never as like a, a group, group. Mm-hmm. yet when we talk about black people or Hispanics Latinos so largely, it's yeah. we talk about them as a group not as an individual doing something mm-hmm. it's a fix this or society really needs to I mean, not even our society, but, like, as people, as individuals, yeah. we have to really identify when we are, when our prejudices and biases mm-hmm. are showing up. And just, that's what we need to clutch. And yeah. Like, really. Like, worry about yourself yeah. and reel yourself in yeah. and be like, why am I thinking this way? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, we have to stop, like, just from our old race perspective where we try to present the community in general as positive we have to stop that i mean we can't be trying to and we can't please everybody right? yeah that's something that I've, I've definitely learned so we have to start focusing on our happiness even if it's going to be as a community but or happiness as a as an individual more so than worrying about what other people are going to think about us as a community there are way more things because once you start community. worrying about your own self yeah. then everyone and everyone starts to do that it's like the community becomes better instead of you criticizing someone from your community and trying to make them like you and then trying to have them follow like what your path of like living right or living like a certain way is supposed to be mm. if that makes sense and i think a part of the criticism too is coming from just in general how our society has these gender roles yeah just like where women are expected to be classy and you're supposed to aim to be a homemaker and be professional and find you know maybe not even get a career like your career is being at home or whatever but no women are even seen as being professional which is fine you know Mm -hmm. but that's not every woman and not every woman wants to do that and i mean like i said i'm not a woman so it's hard for me to speak, speak on this, but I feel like it's unfair to create a box, this box for anyone yeah. to be forced into. And these gender roles even play out because like male rappers mm-hmm. can sing about sex and nobody criticizes them like the way they're criticizing this. It's like this misogynistic culture, culture yeah. within the rap community also because yeah. it's like men can rap about whatever and about like getting as much pussy as whatever but the women doing that also like vice versa no, don't like, do that. yeah yeah <laughs> like it's this whole problem and people don't see the hypocrisy in this like why are men allowed to do whatever they want but women can't like I, yeah it's annoying and you know it's it's not even women it's black women that they're criticizing yeah like it's but yeah because like what we said was about like the just because we're talking about like kylie jenner but like the kardashians can do literally anything model in with no clothes on and break the internet yeah and you're beautiful you're like sexy thank you so much for showing all women that they can do whatever and blah 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 and then when like black women see them they're trying to live their truth or like show off their body it's like not appropriate and you need to you know what and even from the kardashian perspective there is how you know the kardashians Mm -hmm. um kim you know did her ass and that scene is amazing it's beautiful yeah and like people celebrate that part of her body but then black women have that naturally and you know and it's it's seen as yeah like a lot of people don't really see that as sexy and you know, y'all, they almost want black women to cover that up. You like they don't they don't want black women to wear anything too tight, too revealing because then it's gonna that be showing. Show on but gym, then people yeah. like Kim are free to do that. They yeah. can wear whatever if if they're even wearing anything. And yeah. And there's no criticism at that, honestly. <laughs> you know, another part of it that I I don't like the criticism is the fact that and this is criticism from like 
I feel like it's you know criticism from mm-hmm. from white people like um, conservative white people who are like oh this video is like taking yeah. females back a hundred years or whatever oh, yeah, yeah. the case is. <laughs> There, a lot of them are saying that they're worried that, oh, this is what our daughters and our, our children are going to be listening to. But really, your daughters are following Kim Kardashian and these yeah. influencers who are or already doing, doing this already. This yeah. Stuff. But you're upset at the black woman that's that's doing it as well. Yeah. Listen, yeah. So the hypocrisy is just real. <laughs> like, Honestly, I don't, I don't get it. Like at first, it's so crazy. Like. And I think it's so amazing to see what, like, social media can do. Because I think if we all didn't have social media or, like, the internet um, and we saw the video, we would have our own thoughts about it and, like, move on. Either we liked it or we didn't. But having people contribute their own perspective on the video and, like, how we said we didn't really recognize um, the issue with Kylie Jenner being in it. And then seeing someone break it down and like the perspective like the women of color had to dance but the white woman had to just walk through a door open a door and there she made her her money that way and whatever so and it's kind of like how they were all criticizing cardi b for the video and having kylie jenner feature in the video but instead of like like especially to our own the people in our own community it's like we attack them and we don't come from like perspective of like trying to teach or um have like because i think like if you start attacking someone it's like what cardi b did like she kind of just like she's like i'm i'm gonna get offended and i'm gonna like shut those comments down and like stick to what like how i thought this video was great or whatever and like and like you know just stick to like just promoting the video instead of looking like the criticism i think people need to be like especially people in our community need to be better at like informing or educating uh, celebrities because you can't or anyone anyone in your everyday life Mm -hmm. because i feel like we tend to attack those people but when it comes to like white people we want to educate them but when it comes to people of color it's like you cannot be wrong and you have to know your own your whole history and i think that's like another issue because like i think with my family my like my parents weren't didn't really educate me that much on like hispanic culture and mexican culture i had friends that knew a lot about their own culture and about their like um hispanic history and all that were from where they have come from and with my parents they didn't really teach me a lot about like music or the culture or like the history of of like where i came from and I think we all like put so much expectation on people of color to know everything, but yet when it comes to like white people, it's like let's educate them and then like see if they change their mind. But we don't do the same or give people of color the same empathy and chance. and chance mm-hmm. and yeah and consideration. It's just a whole bunch of hypocrisy. yeah because I mean that ties into just our expectation of people of color to be twice as good yeah. as someone else. Yeah. So, you know, our society really just needs to do better, is how I feel. But what what do you think about the video in general? Like, what, on this well, I was, yeah, I was telling you um, how usually, like, I, w- I was kind of excited because I'm, like, usually really into Cardi's, like, creative aspect when it comes to music videos. Um, this one, it was... I don't have a problem with it being, you sexual. know, sexual or anything. I just didn't, like, feel it as much. Just wasn't, like, super into it. I liked the dancing and everything. And I get the whole, like, reason why certain things were put, in, like, into the, video. into the video. But it wasn't, like... It's not your favorite. <laughs> it's not my favorite Cardi video. Yeah. I can get that. I, I mean, like the song more than the video. And really? usually the video is what gets me into, yeah. like, the song. So, yeah. Honestly, I feel like I like the song, but I don't like the beat. I yeah. I feel like the beat is what doesn't do it for me. But even doing research today, I realized that that is a sample of another song. I guess probably back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um that they chose to use but i really think they could have probably chose a better, a better like sample yeah. or beat or something like y'all could have done better on that. <laughs> but i think the lyrics 
Minus a few lines. <laughs> We're largely really good. Yeah. I think that, that it re- the lyrics really does it. And I think for the video, I, the video really made me like the song more personally. Yeah. Just because I liked that, like, the color scheme that they used. Um, I really liked, like I said, Cardi B scene where she mm-hmm. was, like, in the Tiger Stripe scene. Yeah. You know? And um, a Meg scene when she was... The, the, the zebra, zebra print, the zebra right? Print. Yeah. Outside of that, I like the cameos. I think the cameos also yeah. sort of like with Normani and those people. I was going to say too, like with the um, Kylie thing, I feel like a part of it why I wasn't really surprised by seeing yeah. her in there is because there were articles like talking about, you know, oh, yeah. Kylie's rumored to, give, to be in, in the yeah. video. Like, so people kind of already knew that. Yeah, I wasn't was surprised be about her being in it. I was surprised about the criticism yeah i didn't expect there to be criticism about it yeah um but no like you said like like looking into the reason why people are upset yeah i kind of do get the whole like like i said the whole seeing like the breakdown Mm -hmm. i get what they're talking about Mm -hmm. and like it's so crazy to think that like how like once you break it down into like a bunch of pieces it's like whoa Mm -hmm. like we all kind of contribute like cardi b is a woman woman. of color like she's um dominican and and black and then she didn't even realize what she was doing Mm -hmm. and because she probably didn't have the bad intention of oh yeah i don't i'm pretty sure for her wasn't like a color issue Mm -hmm. but like in hindsight you're like wait wow like we even contribute to um to this, this this issue yeah so i mean I, from what i'm getting it's not that kylie was in the video it's just like the Her difference in what she was role. doing versus normani mm-hmm. and even cardi and and me because you know yeah just the difference in all of that so yeah that was kind of interesting just kind of understanding that but personally when i just watched a video this weekend, I didn't. Really I didn't really see that, see and then anything, yeah, honestly. But more power to you, Cardi. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy though that she is like continuing to um, just promote body positivity. Yeah. Um, even though I feel like seeing her tweet, I feel like her intention of it isn't necessarily the purest because she's doing it to make money. That's what, like, mm-hmm. pretty much is what she's saying. I think it's also like who she is. Like, this is where she comes from, and like she's like if you look at her social media she's a very like openly sexual woman (laughs) so i don't think i think it it's it just kind of comes naturally in this like which obviously for any artist or like creator it should because it's like who you are at the Mm. same time so i think it's just kind of comes naturally like yeah the money's really good but i think it makes it easy for her because it's just like this is who she yeah, is that is true that is who she is and and like i can totally get mm-hmm. that but i get the impression that she wants to do more things yeah just in the sense that because she's like in the tweet she mentioned the be careful song which i personally liked I liked me too um but people i did see but criticism people criticize of it. that yeah and i feel like that almost made her not want to yeah. do stuff like that again you know so um and I like did, I, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, at the end of the day, I want her to do... Like, if she wants to be both, she, she can wants, be both. Yeah. She can be both sexually, you know, fluid. And, and also, like, sensitive and, and like, yeah. have feelings. Mm-hmm. And um, it's kind of like, once again, like, of the whole, like, misogynistic and also race issue where, like, when she talks about politics, it's like, shut up, Cardi, and focus on... You can't have an opinion. ...your music and, like being a hoe or whatever but and then like she can't be educated or learn more or talk about her view on politics and i think like artists should have should be able to talk about politics like when they say um like Especially celebrity should not have like a platform to speak on politics. They already have a platform. Yeah, like, you're, you better use it for something good. Something good, especially if, like for her that has been affected by poverty and like mm-hmm. she living as so, she can speak yeah, to yeah about it and her experience and that's why I think for her having gone from having like nothing to. Like, kind of how you said, like, I want her to do whatever she wants to do. And if she wants to talk about, she wants to do another um, song, like, be careful and also talk about, like, her pussy, then, like, 
do to, that. Yeah. But I think it's scary for someone to have gone from having nothing to having this platform and having fans and money. And you kind of want to please people because you don't want to go back to that like lifestyle that you once had because yeah. it was scary that's and true. uncertain. So I think that's like a lot of... That's true. It's almost like a survival. Yeah, a survival method. thing. Yeah. And like thinking that if you are yourself or if you want to... Try something new. Try something new or like explore other aspects or hobbies mm-hmm. that everything else is going to be taken away. Mm-hmm. And that's like... And yeah. she has a daughter now. Like she wants, she has to do like everything, you know. And I wonder like if people are criticizing from that aspect, you know. Because I know like people love to say, oh yeah, no, it, what are you, what is your daughter going to say? Like yeah, when she grows up and she sees us, like I'm sure she doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she does not. So <laughs> don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> Interesting. I, I see that she has been commenting on it. So mm-hmm. um, I'm going to look out for more, more you know, tweets yeah, and stuff see from her. What other... Because, yeah, this is not the first <laughs> yeah. sexually explicit song, and it won't be the last. Yeah, especially um, from Cardi. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, she's coming, like, this is coming from, like, the 90s when, like, Lil' Kim and, mm-hmm. and like, other ex- sexually explicit, like, female rappers back in mm-hmm. the day. But, like you were saying, like, I think back then we didn't have social media and we weren't able to get this collective voice. Yeah. Feeling. So you kind of all had her opinion. And that was it. Like, it just kind of ended there. Yeah. But no, there's social media where you can voice your opinion. And, and like, start trends. Yeah, that almost like... persuades people and spreads that fire. So, just learn to be you and <laughs> Yeah, and, like, people need yourself. to learn. Like, you, you evolve every single day. If you look at yourself last year, you you're, prob- not, the you, you're not the same person. Mm-hmm. And why can't celebrities evolve also Mm -hmm. so if like somebody wants to get into something different or no longer wants to do music and let's say gets into politics or advocacy like you know like social justice advocacy then that's okay like oh my god (laughs) that just reminded me of this so this lady and she's an artist yeah she was an artist in jamaica she's called lady saw so in the 90s, yeah. she was, like, really raunchy. Like, she sang about the, like, her pussy. She sang about, like, <laughs> like all that stuff. <laughs> but in the 2000s, she made a, a turnaround and she, like, became, a, like, a priest, pretty much. Like, she oh, got wow. really into the church and she, yeah. she now sings, like, gospel songs and stuff. So that's just to say, like, people change. Yeah. And, like, and, like why was it okay change. for Kanye to talk about sex and, and women and now God. switch to gospel music so that's like another thing when yeah. it comes into this like male men are to yeah it. men can change men can evolve men mm. can be quote unquote change to be better or whatever but a woman can't evolve or have other hobbies or other things that they want to get into always going to be seen as that, that one thing that, that they've the thing that they originally be, yeah. yeah you know um, thing, nothing but person that person that they they always you know they used to be um, but like you said people change and people evolve yeah. like that, that that's not who we were a year ago or 10 years ago. totally different but it's just interesting like that that's the kind of example like outside of the US and it's something that's consistent honestly maybe even worse mm-hmm. in like conservative countries like I mean if you want to call Jamaica a conservative country <laughs> but just societally you know where they yeah. have those ex- expectations because um, people still see I mean she still has that um, image of yeah. being who she was maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. you know, as a sexual vixen. But I might be Cardi. And I, I, although I'm not the biggest fan of the song, I don't also don't I like, like what she's see, standing yes, for. Yeah. And I don't like to see the. I mean, we're free to criticize and have our opinion, but I think it's very hypocritical, personally. So our society really needs to get its shit together. <laughs> if they were criticizing, like, the color scheme or like the editing that'd be different but i don't like the what it exactly is that we're criticizing and it's kind of like even what you said like we're not just because we're people of color um does not mean we aren't prejudiced Mm -hmm. and like we have we and that we don't have like prejudice thoughts Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like having to teach ourselves to be like better people as well it's not just white people that need to do the learning and unlearning and learning again 
Okay, so um, I wanted to, like, touch base on our monthly, like, segment on what we're working on in, like, our mental health. And I'm not sure if you remember what it is that you wanted to work on, Mm -hmm. but if you do remember, do you think that you did do it or not? Um, I am kind of refocusing, to be honest, Mm -hmm. on, like, what I want to do, so... I won't say too much now, just because like I'm okay. not a person. Like when I'm making plans, I like to just kind of make them and then do them on the DL. Yeah. And once they're <laughs> done, you're like, I did this. <laughs> but largely, I think mine will be just that I want to focus more on what I actually want to do, and not just mm-hmm. do something just for doing it. And I yeah. think that's ultimately what's gonna make me happy. So I have to start taking that more seriously and. Not just think about doing something for the money, <laughs> like we were talking That's about. That's seriously what I've been, like, thinking about. But, yeah, I'll let you finish. Yeah, so, I mean... So, are you referring, like, you wanted to do something with school? Mm-hmm. Like, you had a set plan, but now you're like, why I am mean, I I'll, really doing still... this? Or kind of, like, asking yourself more questions? About maybe what kind of school I want to go to. Okay. I'll say that. And maybe just the type of certifications and stuff like that that I'll need to do. Mm-hmm. So a lot of largely I've let money or you know because it has seemed expensive mm-hmm. stop me from wanting to pursue my dream. And I think I really have to stop. I think it's what I did a lot, like with what type of school I should be going to and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Until I finally was like, I don't want to go to. I don't want to be. A nurse I don't want to do this and like just finally going to the school I wanted to and then pursuing the career path that I like wanted to Mm -hmm. and even though it it has been a little bit more difficult to find a job in that career I think it's like I mean it's been like two months since I graduated but I'm like acting like you know and we're in the middle of a pandemic but (laughs) I think I'm content with like my decision so I think you really need to kind of like, and it took me a while too. And like, that was with me not really having to think too much about the money aspect or even like the support aspect because my parents were okay with whatever, but I was so focused on like money mm-hmm. and how much money I would be making right after mm-hmm. and like making my family proud and you kind of have to let that go and like mm-hmm. realize that you don't really have to, you're not living for your family, like even though they gave you like my you, your parents gave you life or like you feel like you have to kind of show up for your family you really don't and like yeah it'd be nice but you need to do what's gonna make you happy yeah yeah largely a part of it was just wanting to do something that i could do that was relatively cheap mm-hmm. to get to get um like a certain you know i did a program in college or something yeah. that would be relatively cheaper but Maybe that's just not what I want. Yeah. Maybe that's why I have And then that ends up being a waste of money because yeah. I ended up literally um, spending like three, four years on and off at a community college because I literally couldn't decide what I wanted to do because every time I picked something, I'm like, no, I'm literally miserable like trying to and get... And just kind of gives you anxiety. Like, yeah, and then I ended up spending more money because then um, I was like, you know what? At the end, I was like, wait, nursing and this is not for me and this is not for me. And then until finally, like, I picked what I really wanted to do, and I just finished it and was done. Mm -hmm. But for sure, I'm going to, once I, you know, get it official, I'll let you guys know. And, yeah. (laughs) But what do you think you want to work on? Wait, but I have a question. Uh Do you have a process of, like, how you're figuring it out? Yeah. So I I, I have spoken to somebody who is already, like, 10 years ahead of me pretty yeah. much in the field so um i know what? Wait. <laughs> okay I I, I, now i know okay <laughs> yeah so she kind of told me like what i have to do or yeah. how i can start out with yeah doing it. um so i'm gonna start there i'm gonna start what? looking into like making some calls and stuff this week so that's exciting. Now that I know what it is, now I'm excited. <laughs> but Loki, I just kind of want to, I don't want to like, I know they say it's good to yeah. put it out in, in, into the universe and like read that energy. Yeah. But, but you me, can like, keep that in your, like you can put it on the universe like for yourself. For like yes. you can like 
like I sometimes like in the mornings I'll do like morning affirmations and I'll like tell myself like what I'm going to do and like how I'm going to like how my mood's gonna be and like you don't have to tell anyone I like that that's a good point that's what I need to do more of more self affirmations and something else I want to try too is like making a journal I want to start do that it's like so good for you yeah I need to start I keep I keep yeah I need to start yeah (laughs) but I can definitely see like the benefit in it and like it's something I've tried with Jordan Mm -hmm. in a sense that like let's say we have an argument or something I find that I like to write it down like just to explain myself and like yeah get it out yeah um and it's just a good like avenue so why not apply that to the rest of my life like if I'm feeling anything I mean at the end of the day like whatever it is I can just make make a a small jotting so it's something I definitely want to want to do more yeah I like it a lot because I'm like a person that acts on like instinct or like I'll act if I'm mad I will jump to conclusions before Mm -hmm. like analyzing and then because I'll jump to conclusions I'll like yell at someone and then I'll (laughs) analyze (laughs) so (laughs) so that like journaling really helps me like kind of determine like is this kind of like a pick your battle type of thing like is it even worth arguing with someone after writing all this and like it's really not like and it helps you it has like process yeah it, and right? it has like avoided so many arguments <laughs> with people <laughs> Listen, yeah so it's good um but for me um i think i've been like really struggling with like the work but I think um, I kind of come to like accepting like okay we're in the middle of a pandemic it's all right to not have a job in my career field right away Mm -hmm. so I started applying to a few places but I'm not like desperately applying like I was at first and I actually started looking I um I started, uh, I told my manager I wanted to go back to going full-time because I worked full uh, part-time because of school. So I changed my shift to full-time now. And I've been looking at like different volunteer jobs because um, I really liked doing that when I was in school and just kind of finding like something that I like outside of work. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it's kind of like what Kira said, like you are not the person you're at work. Like that doesn't define you. So I kind of trying to I'm, I think I'm kind of like in your phase right now except like instead of pre pre school to post mm-hmm. grad um just trying to find like something that I find value in and like so you want worth go, my time you want to um do a po- like uh you want to go back to school pretty much is what you're saying well I've been looking at um yeah I have been looking at um master's programs and like what I really want to get into but I think I'm gonna spend like a year maybe or like not even like maybe the next few months just like volunteering seeing what I like and what I don't like and like when I so I can pick like the best kind of program that I want to get into I do have like some sort of an idea but I don't want to talk about it because I always change my mind and I'm very indecisive and then I feel like an idiot so (laughs) keep it like that (laughs) no and then um but also I have been working on kind of um so there was this podcast that I listened to and it's called diet starts tomorrow and they were talking about um mindful like mindful eating Mm -hmm. and like I've told you like eating has always been like such a struggle with me like I used to binge eat and also I would starve myself when I was like in high school and um nobody really noticed until like my aunts and stuff started telling my mom like they need to be concerned about like my weight because I was like too skinny and um I think like weight has always been like a big issue for me um but I was listening to the podcast and it um talks about intuitive eating Mm -hmm. and uh basically like if you want food I feel like let's say you see like ice cream you have ice cream at home kind of like giving yourself like allowing yourself to eat it without feeling guilty about it after and it's like a process because then eventually you'll stop overeating Mm -hmm. because you think that the food's like I don't like and it's so hard to explain it but like for I like like I said I used to be like a binge eater 
And like I would have like the mindset of like I have to eat everything because it's not going to be there Mm -hmm. later and I'm not going to eat for like three days after that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that kind of still in my brain, like I feel like I have to eat everything in sight like when I get like a dinner plate or whatever because I feel like it's not like I don't know what it is in my brain that's like telling me it's not going to be there and like I overeat and then I feel so guilty about it and I go home and I cry so I think so like um I ordered the book and like it's a book they there's there's a book that they recommend that basically tells you like the process of intuitive eating and I think anyone who like struggles with like um body image or like eating disorders it's a really good like start to kind of intuitive eating but basically it's like allowing yourself that indulgence or whatever and then eventually like if you see like let's say you want ice cream you'll stop when you know like your body doesn't need it anymore like if that makes sense like just listening to your body yeah and like yeah and then and kind of like talk it talks about like how not every day you're getting to eat the same amount of food because some days you're more hungry, other days you're not. But with me, it's like every day or every meal, I would feel like I had to eat everything like desperately. Mm-hmm. And it kind of like helps you like, and you're kind of like mindful at the same time because you're like, wait, I don't, do I really need to keep eating this? Like mm-hmm. I'm full. Why am I still eating it? I'm kind of like, you're kind of like talking to yourself in your brain and like kind of, like kind of is helping you to process like the reason why you keep trying yeah. to eat more and then mm-hmm. once you realize it's like okay i've had like those like maybe like that like i've i'm, I'm no longer like hungry hungry yeah. or needing that like ice cream like mm-hmm. i took two bites and that's like really all that i need and i'm satisfied yeah exactly so like yeah kind of like does that so i've trying to like just implement that yeah well you you're, you're the book is coming you said so mm-hmm. once you get to read it and hopefully it's not too big yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm but sure I, it will be, um, yeah i'm trying to like no. be more um positive in the way that i talk about like my body or like the way that i talk about like the illness or the like as a whole so like and instead of like putting myself thing. down yeah yeah, yeah. and i've been trying to exercise more because it's like i feel for a while i didn't do it as much but it really makes me feel good but i just i'm more of a class person like i like it's very therapeutic for me to go to a class mm-hmm. rather than just like a workout by myself by yourself, yeah. yeah so the pandemic's like been really hard because i'm like i'm more of like a class have, like, yeah hmm but gyms are opening up, so... I know, they, so at my gym, LA Fitness, they do have, like, Zumba classes, I think. Yeah. I think I've seen. <laughs> No, I don't do Zumba. But that's the only one. Yeah. Okay, that I seen. love, that's why I love Lifetime, because I'm like, the money's so worth it, because all I do are really classes, and, like, sometimes I'll run, but um, I used to go to at least, like, three classes a week, and if yeah, you, they pay, have some really if you pay for, like, I was looking at... Um, because the, the gym that I like going to is, like, 20, 25 minutes away. And I'm it's, like, really yeah, even though there's another lifetime, like, five minutes oh, really? from my house. Yeah, and, but uh, <laughs> I like the people at the Schomburg one. And, um, and I was looking at classes, like, for Pilates mm-hmm. near me. Mm-hmm. And tell me why it was, like, 150 a month or something. And I was, like, okay, um... I think it was like five classes or like five to seven classes for like 150 or whatever a month. And yet, um, lifetime's like $60 and you have like unlimited classes. Yeah. So, why would you? Exactly. <laughs> so and like, you have access oh. to so many other classes. Too. Yeah. And like the equipment, like in case mm-hmm. I want to just do something different one day. But that's yeah. a no brainer. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It just sucks it's so far. Yeah. But, I mean, it's worth it, especially if it's going to bring you that, you know, peace yeah, of mind. Yeah, it's like therapy for mm-hmm. me, in a way. Mm-hmm. 
think I never miss here. It's worth it, honestly. I, I like the lifestyle, but it's yeah. a little expensive. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I hate that, but like, I mean, if so, for me, like investing in myself. Yeah, for for me, like, I wouldn't really use the classes that much. It would just be for me. Yeah. So, so for that, it's like just go to like Planet or something. You know, like it's not worth spending so much money. But because I do like, I do the yoga and I do like the strength classes and like, um, like other cardio strength or hit classes. Mm -hmm. It's like so worth it because if you would go to just like. A cl- like a gym or just classes they charge so yeah. much probably twice what you get yeah at, or more than that I think like Pilates was actually like 150 for like four classes to be honest like what? once a week or something that's why I was like three in a week yeah and I do three in a week at like lifetime so I'm like yeah it's an overrated, not honestly. happening but yeah continue to do what you have to do honestly well we both have to yeah to do what we have to do for or collective happiness you know, um, as individuals and just as, yeah. as you know, friends. Um, well, but, I'm excited now that I know what you're yeah. trying to do. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I really just, I don't, I, what and I'm I doing think now is just like not really focusing on how much it's going to take to get there. Yeah. Because you know, that's something that has really stopped me from pursuing it. Because it's like you already wasted like maybe a few years trying to Working think up. about where <laughs> a, like what like shorter path you can take but now you you could I'm have been at, done yeah. and yeah I, if i had started you might maybe. as well just do what you want to yes, do if exactly. it's gonna make you happy so i'm gonna just do it and we need to make it norm like we need to normalize like um that it's okay to change your mind or like yeah. experiment or explore different options mm-hmm. so don't feel at, bad about that at the end of the day we have to do like, if you're going to end up doing something for the rest of your life, like, you want to be. Yeah. Sure. And I was even talking to, like, one of my coworkers and, like, her daughter just graduated from high mm-hmm. school. And she's, like, really anxious now because she has to choose, like, what she's going to be majoring in in college. And, yeah. I mean, that's... Isn't that, like, crazy? Like, at 18, they expect you to, like, true. know what you want to do yeah. for the rest of your life. I'm like, what? For the next, like, 65. Yeah. Hopefully. That's why a lot of people end up changing their career path, like, yeah. in the middle of like when they're 30s or 40s right and even in college like i feel like even like kids or people choose like what they want to do at 18 let's say they choose to major in this um maybe a year in they change they change their mind yeah you know who who knows but yeah it's we really our education system really needs to be better at maybe showing people more Mm -hmm. different like avenues that they can go down so instead of like majoring in this one thing you can do a little bit of yeah i think they need to start that like in high school like even that even earlier the better honestly yeah like showing what other career paths there are because i think like when i graduated i just like knew like the normal type of girl stuff Mm -hmm. for girl majors i guess the female majors like nursing teacher and like but again, like, you can do yeah, so much more. Yeah. Honestly. So, definitely. Well, you've already pursued it, so <laughs> no, it's time for me. Yes. <laughs> That's um, exciting. Yes. So, more to come for sure. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Um, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram yes. on, at something to say X and email us. And please rate and review (laughs) our podcast. (laughs) Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye.